Hello everyone, welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports. And some breaking and bizarre news as Eddie Jones has apparently confirmed his exit. Well, I mean, apparently he has confirmed his exit uh, from Australia Rugby after the World Cup, which seems very strange considering he's actually yet to take charge of Australia for a match. Um, so a bizarre um, revelation coming from the Australian coach. And uh, whether it will actually hold true or not, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But a couple of interesting things that he has said on a podcast this week and uh, we know now we get on the race to dissect and now we get to really sort of spark the rumor mill and discuss what actually going to happen with Eddie Jones over the next sort of, uh, you know, sort of six months uh, with regards to whether he actually holds, stays true to the word, whether he does leave, whether he doesn't leave and what he's actually been said and what actually could be the ramifications uh, of what he has said. Um, so before we sort of get into, into, into what we talked about on the podcast, please do smash a like on the video. Please do subscribe to the channel as well right so eddie jones was speaking on the evening standard rugby podcast and uh made a, cu a couple of uh, different things um first of all he's signed well he, we thought he had signed for a, a contract through to the end of 2027 but uh, has said the following i'm only coaching to this world cup i've signed but as i made the mistake before i've made i've stayed too long so we win the world cup it'll be time to go if we lose the world cup it'll be time to go so basically what he's saying is he's leaving after the World Cup. That is the only way you can interpret that. Now, does he mean it, for example? Is he being quite serious? Uh, or is it one of those things where he's just sort of throwing it out there and then he'll resign sensationally afterwards or whatever? It's, I don't know, who knows, really. It's a very strange thing to come out and say. Um, but Eddie Jones is known for being that type of person that, that says a lot of these sort of things, sometimes goes back on his words. Sometimes it's, you know, part of his mind games or his long-term future or long-term game or whatever. But uh, right at this stage, according to him, he is leaving at the World Cup because it's either going to be a case of leaving on top if he wins the World Cup or he wasn't, you know, they, they didn't get the job done and therefore he still needs to leave. So it's it's a strange thing. As I said, he has yet to actually take charge of Australia again. You know, he, he's appointed in January. And Australia have yet to play a game this season. So they've had a couple of training camps, but that's about the only thing he's really done as Australia coach. So to already basically be saying that he's leaving and that he's quitting is a bizarre stance to take. Um, I'm not sure I buy it. You know, I don't think any of us really buy it. You know, no, he's not going to be there for six months um, unless he's got another job lined up that he really wants or he's going to retire or something like that. I'm, I'm very surprised by the whole thing. Um, but what was quite interesting is that they spoke about the Australian uh, eligibility rule, rule um, the Gitter Law. Um, and uh, he said the Wallabies have a law called the Gitter Law where you could only have three players outside Australia with 30 caps. Um, he said that we haven't tabled that with the board yet, but I'm sure we're going to get positive response on getting more players because we've got Skelton, who's probably the best right side lock in the world, Richie Arnold at Toulouse, who's a fantastic player in the top 14, Quay Cooper, Sam Karevi, Marika Korobeti. We can't snub that sort of talent. I think Australians are always better when they are underdogs than when everybody thinks they haven't got a sniff, then they, um, they can come in under the radar. So quite a few things um, about sort of this is that there's two things. Obviously, obviously, the big one is that, you know, he's come out and said he's apparently quit. But the big thing, I think, in terms of Australia's chance for the World Cup is that apparently it looks like they might actually be looking, talking to the board and looking to try and review that gift of law for the World Cup and, and whether it will remain in place or whether they, he will have the chance to select players um, who, who are based outside or more than three players who are based outside of Australia. Um, so that'll be very interesting, you know, I mean, and because at the moment it's it's a case of trying to decide, well, which three are they going to take? You know, lots of talk, obviously, you know, Sama Karevi, Marika Korobeti, you know, are, are probably two that are already there. Craig Cooper, for example, I personally think is a player that they can't afford to leave behind. We all saw what Will Skelton did in that, in that Champions Cup final. You know, he is one of the best locks in the world when he plays like that. So how can you afford to leave him behind? So... It's going to be interesting to see what that sort of discussion is going to be. And, and I think, you know, obviously Australia's chance in the World Cup dramatically improve if they do decide to ditch the, the, the Gitter law and, and allow Eddie Jones to pick a much broader and, and, and a much better squad. Let's just put it that way. Let's just be quite frank. It is going to be a better squad if you can choose more players outside. Um, but uh, the next big thing is the whole sort of resignation thing. And again, I don't really buy it, to be honest. Um, you know, yeah, he's talking about you know, some of the some of the various things you talk about in this podcast is um, we are trying to build that leadership group to uh, up to being a team that's led by the team, not a team that's led by the coach. We're working hard in developing an Australian style of play. We've lost that a little bit. We've become too much like the Kiwis. 
and try to play their way, which is the way most teams in the world try to look at the game. We're trying to go back to a more abrasive, aggressive style, in-your-face Australian game. Um, so it's all about this, you know, building process, uh, you know, about what we're trying to do and, and trying to develop, and then saying that he's going to leave after the World Cup. I don't buy it. He's, you know, they've got a British National Alliance series coming up. They've got a 2027 World Cup. If he stays over five years, he can be there for two World Cups and a British National Alliance series. I do not see how he will not want to be involved in that British and Irish line series. Uh, so I personally don't buy the whole, it'll be time for me to go, regardless of what happens at the World Cup. But let me know, what do you think? Down in the comments below, let me know. Do you think this is just a, a play by him or a bit of mind game? Or do you think he's generally sitting there thinking, now I'm going to do a six-month stint and then I'm going to leave? I'll be surprised. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash the like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching. My name is Stephen, and I'll chat to you soon.